to this very special edition of the KJ Masterclass Live, the show which ensures that you profit from your time spent here with experts, either through their industry insights, information, or simply learning from them. And today we have Miriam Matthews, CEO of Define Your DNA Coaching Academy. She's a speaker, therapist, and a transformational life coach. Welcome to the show, Miriam. Thank you so much for having me on, AJ. It's awesome to be here. You are welcome, and I'm sure a lot of people will benefit with what we'll be discussing about winning the battle of the mind. So, Miriam, first to understand uh, for you, uh, for uh, for the audience, is that you you say that you are not what has happened to you, and that there is something much more beyond to you. So, what does it exactly mean? And you know, and and how can you know, some something happened to us, and we may not, uh, we may not be that person, but some something else. How can you help us understand uh, us in the aspect so that we truly understand the deep meaning behind it? Absolutely, you are not what happened to you. You are the resilience that rises above it. So, if you are a human being, okay, if you're watching this you know, you're a human being, it means that you have been through something, some sort of hardship, some sort of negative challenge at some point in your life, whether it was in childhood, whether it was in your teenage years or adult life, you know, everybody is imperfect. We're dealing, you know, we're imperfect. We're dealing, we're interacting with imperfect people uh, who are many times led by their own will and emotions. Um, and we've seen time and time again, if you, if you, turn the news on, flash news, flash news, somebody's dying, something has happened, you know? So there are so many trials and tribulations that we all will go through at some point. And um, the challenge, of course, is not only is that a challenge, but another challenge is that um, the way that uh, we're composed or the way that our minds work or our brains work um, is also to, to uh, help try to keep us safe. It will try to keep us safe. Um, but the way that it will do that is many times it will register um, those traumas and those trials in you um, to the point that um, you believe that, you know what, if I were to try to step out um, of a place that uh, is beyond um what I can see or is beyond my comfort zone, something bad may happen to me. So, okay, let me, let me try to take that, that big concept and, and make it into a small example. Me touching something that is hot, like a stove is going to be registered in my brain and it's going to tell me not to do that again. Right. Um, and that is a good thing. That is a love language from my brain telling me, Hey, don't do that again, right? Um, but say, for instance, I go through a, a heartbreak or a terrible relationship, um, or um, I don't know, maybe I have a business that falls apart. My brain may tell me, okay, don't start another business because that hurt that you experienced before you might experience again. Don't get into another relationship because that hurt that you experienced before, you may experience that again. And then not only that, we also develop certain belief systems like, well, am I a failure because my business failed? <laughs> or um, am I someone that's not lovable because the person that I loved before left me? So I say, I always like to tell people, you're not what happened to you. Just because you experience some type of hardship doesn't mean that your value is diminished or your value is changed because of what you went through. It's just the way that the brain works. The brain may try to keep you from experiencing that thing again. Um, and then we also develop negative beliefs that will also keep us um, from stepping into something um, simply because we think the probability of something bad happening will also happen again. Right, Miriam. Well, well explained and well, you know, uh, you have given a very good perspective. Now, they say that you are a sum total of all the people that you meet. 
and all the incidences that has happened with me. So if I am uh, quite, say, I become the person, the type of things that happen to me, then how do I actually come out of that situation and move beyond those situations, the sum total of all the people that I have met in my life, mm -hmm. of all the incidents that has happened to me. And suddenly, how is it possible that I detach from that and find the new me? How do I know who is the new me? And mm -hmm. what do I do with my new me? Mm -hmm. and, and how do I achieve that? What mm -hmm. is the what are the tools to do that? And you know, what are the uh, what is the purpose of finding the new me? Is it mm -hmm. is it something much more sublime? Is it related to goals? Is it related to God? Who is the uh, who is the one whom I can rely on? Mm -hmm. Is it my own mind? How do I unravel all this mystery to help me reach myself, the real me in the real sense? Ooh. Help us understand that. Area. And that is the million dollar question, AJ. That is the million dollar question right there. Um, and they're going to get it free today. <laughs> the answer, you know what? Um, it's it's a it's a, a multitude of answers. That, but the first one that really sticks out um, that I know to be true for my life is God. You know, um, when you first started uh, asking the questions, another thing sticks out. You said, "Well, how do I know? I'm the sum total of all of these experiences, all of these different people. How do I even know who I am?" Because many times, here's another thing: when we go Go through hardship um, and sometimes uh, we are also um, burdened with other people's expectations of who we should be growing up uh, to the point that when we become adults we don't know who we are or we don't know how to get out of the hurts and the traumas and all these different things so who am I so sometimes we're also driven into an overcorrection of self um, that when you're an adult now it's like Everything I have to do is I have to do it perfectly, right? Because my mind doesn't want me to experience the disappointment. My mind doesn't want me to experience the same poverty that my parents experienced. You know, my mind. And then I have their expectations on how I'm supposed to be. My friend's expectations on how I'm supposed to be. Who am I? You know, so sometimes, again, we um, we think now sometimes we begin to overcorrect by doing everything as perfectly as possible. We end up trying to be everything for everybody. <laughs> um, I'm thinking about even my mom who uh, who uh, migrated over from Ghana um, and she had uh, people, family members, depending on her back home, you know, while she was also building a family here and also trying to uh, make a life for herself and go to school. And um, so it's not just about actually being accom accomplishments are good. Accomplishments are good, but it's not just about being accomplishment driven. Um, it's good to help family. You know, it's, it's good. It's absolutely good to do those things. But it's also not about being everything for everyone. I think go it, just to take it a step back, it's about recognizing even by you asking that question, by you asking that question, who am I also shows that the person that knows that they're the sum total of all these things and who am I also shows that there's something that they know uh, is on the inside of them that actually needs to come out. So I just want to commend anyone that is asking that question to themselves right now. There's the, the true you is on the inside of you. The true you is on the inside of you. Um, so that's number one. Number two is from in my in my experience, okay, my God, my you know, God has really helped me um, to have the courage uh, to change uh, the way I thought things should be or how I should handle things, right? Um, as long as I thought that my mission was to meet other people's expectations um, and was always to be everything for everyone and was to always do everything perfectly, then I wouldn't give in my true self the permission to actually come out. Um, and if as long as I didn't give myself the permission to come out and even though I'm here and I'm there, I'm there in some way, my true self is hidden in some cage. Right. Uh, and sometimes we go into, I say, cage or into the cave. It's like almost like a, a prisoner, a prisoner, because uh, the mind is saying, well, wait, you know, you don't want to disappoint your parents if you're if you don't become that that lawyer or you don't want to disappoint, disappoint your parents if you don't become this doctor. Um, whereas what if, um, you know, 
that my passion that was uh, birthed into me, I believe, I believe that God uh, gives us uh, gifts um, even uh, before you're born. I, that's what my belief is, is, is that he has a plan for us that in spite of what I go through and in spite of the family that I have, no matter, no matter if um, uh, they think less of me or even they think highly of you I, I you should be something i believe that everybody has a unique purpose so um a, a part of that was my uh, understanding what my unique purpose was was giving myself permission um to change and and to also develop that relationship with god and that's where the courage to really discover um you know, what is on the inside of me started happening. And I started asking myself, and then you start asking yourself those questions. Well, what do I like? You know, what do I like? Is there something I'm passionate about? Not only that, many times it, the people's purpose and their passion can also be tied to their pain in the past. Have you ever just seen uh, something on the news and you're like, oh, that just makes me upset, you know? Um, and many times that's also uh, where you may find purpose. And it's by giving you, it's allowing the courage, which I believe again is, is, is a spiritual thing. Um, and then giving yourself permission to, to be cultivated, you know, just, you know, in that discovery, you, you really begin to discover you, you begin to discover your purpose. Right, right, medium. So what is the role of God in our our life in terms of our purpose and helping us find who we are? Is it is it that God wants us to do something so he helps us get to that thing in the way he wants it? Then what is the role of mine? Why has he given us this mind? What should we do with this mind? Calibrate our mind. With, the, with God's mind, because he wants something from us and we don't know what we want from us, but then we sometimes know, want to know what we want from us. And then it all becomes a very confusing thing because everybody wants from us something or the other, but we don't know what we want from, uh, from ourselves. And that becomes a very confusing state. So who should be the guiding light in all these things? Should it be our mind? Because we think the mind, mind can think rationally or should it be God? But with God, we don't know. We can feel him or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever superpower or, or you know, the divine, divine power that one may believe in. So how do I tread my path carefully into the future, mm -hmm. which sometimes can be full of darkness? How mm -hmm. do I move forward? How do I find my purpose, my goal, myself, and also try to bring that impact to the to the community around, you know, uh, sometimes that is what can lead to the real fulfillment mm -hmm. that I may be living for. How does it all work out, Miriam? Help us understand this. Okay, let me see. I, I'm going to try my best, AJ, because that's another million dollar question. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, I, I, I recognize um, that we have our own minds. And, and at the end of the day, yes, I believe God gives us all free will. Um, and as a matter of fact, God is love, you know? So God is not a dictator. <laughs> I believe that God is love. And um, because he loves us unconditionally, uh, he, he gives us free will. He cannot force his will upon us. So um, that's why we have the will to choose. There's also this scripture um, that says, you know, such as a man and not saying just a man, um, only a man and not a female, but I'm talking about both genders, um, such as a man or a person thinketh in their heart, so they are. And the thing is, whatever I think in my heart is uh, what I'm going to become. And that's also what I will produce as well. OK, um, now, when the challenge with only um, thinking about or thinking with with your mind, especially after you've experienced so many hurts and traumas um, or, you know, or so hurts and traumas, different trials and tribulations or whatever the case is, we de develop negative beliefs. If I am solely reliant on just my mind, remember what I said in the beginning, my mind is um, 
the way my mind loves me is to keep me from trying to experience that same hurt again, but it will do so in irrational ways. Like, again, if my business fails and I want to open another one, there may, if I don't have um, faith, <laughs> if I don't have faith, um, which is a spiritual um, language or connection uh, with God, um, who may be telling me, hey, you know, start this business. If I don't have faith and I'm solely reliant on my mind, it, it is highly likely that I won't try again because I'm not trusting that I will be okay no matter what the outcome is. My mind is solely there to keep me safe, to try to keep me from hurt and harm. That um, the, the journey with God um, it's not about his force on me, but it's about my faith in him. And my faith in him says, you know what? Um, as you spend time with me, there are certain things that I may reveal to you, even some mystery. Some of the questions that we ask over and time and time again, um, it's, I instead of me being worried about what the outcome is or the probability of things not happening, um, I'm going to worry less and have more clarity. So, and more clarity and just um, a bit more, um, I, I can't, I, I don't know. The only word I can really use is faith that I'm going to be okay. No matter what, I'm going to be okay. You know, I don't know if that answers that question fully. No, no, it does. It does, in fact. And, you know, uh, to add to that is that Many a times we just think that, okay, I have not uh, lived the way I should have. I've not done things correctly or maybe whatever the reason, I have lost my way. And sometimes you find that your, your purpose, your meaning, your life has lost its meaning to yourself and perhaps even to the people that are around you. So in that situation, how does one regain that trust in his or her own life and look at things that, okay, I still have it in me, you know, mm -hmm. to create that impact for uh, for someone uh, in, in around me or even in the wider world. How is it? Is it late always or is it always we have time in hand? And secondly, because you also talk about you are the answer to somebody's prayers. So oh, if right. I am the answer to somebody's prayers, mm -hmm. how can I my life be useless? And, you know, it uh, that prayer, somebody's... If not my prayer, somebody else's prayer has to be answered through me. Yes. How do you look at that? What would you like to tell people who lose hope at whatever stage of life they are in? Absolutely. And uh, you know, the question you asked before, there's some things that um, uh, that's coming up in my mind right now, my spirit right now, that I want to tie into this second question. Um, there's this one, um, well, there's one scripture, but you know, in terms of my spiritual journey, I, I, I forget that. I think it's John 4, 6 in, in, in the Bible. OK. And uh, Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth and the life. So for anyone that's, you know, many times I have felt confused. I'm lost. What do I do now? Well, he says, well, I'm the way. All right. Well, Jesus, you are the way. All right. So if you're the way, you know, what do I do now? Um, so I would get into my word. I would get into the Bible um, and I would. So this is where the mind just being solely reliant on your mind uh, can lead you to a, a roadblock, right? Uh, he's the way, but my mind may lead me to a roadblock. So if he's the way, that means um, there, there must be a barrier that's going to break, right? That's, you know, um, so that's where faith comes in. So faith in who he says I am is one thing that has truly helped me. Um, so I would do, I would study and I would also meditate on, who he says I am. So some things that I learned that I am and that you are is that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Whoa. Well, that goes against the trauma that I experienced when I was six or seven years old, because the person that I was interacting with told me I'm nothing or the person that I was interacting with may told me I was stupid or I was dumb or, or whatever the case is. But he's telling me I'm fearfully, and wonderfully made. Another thing I learned is that everything that is in me is of value. Everything is in me. In Proverbs, I think, 31, it says everything in you is a value. You lack nothing of value. What? Wow. So that means everything inside of me is profitable. 
only if I begin to see it the way you do. And that takes faith. So faith goes beyond whatever I think I know. So some of it is forget what you thought you knew about yourself, especially if it's self-hatred, especially if it's self-loathing, especially if it leads you to fear rejection and to reject yourself. That's not that it takes faith to go beyond your experiences so that you can have a new experience. All right. Uh huh. Um, and then forgiveness, even forgiveness of others. That's a that's a big principle. So I learned about the importance of forgiveness is sometimes we think, oh, how can I forgive this person and what they did to me? Because as long as my mind is focused on that, that, you know, my mind will be set on what happened instead of what could happen if I were to let it go. So there's so much that's waiting for you in your future. There's so you, there's so much that there are people that are waiting for you to also recognize, you know, my goodness, there's so much value in you. Uh, and if you can allow yourself to see that you can solve the problem because you can, there's a lesson that you've learned from all of those experiences, depending on how you see it. And once you are able to capture the lesson, the lesson is equivalent to the light that is on the inside of you. And that's why you are a light in dark places. And you were also sent here to be a light, not to be overcome by darkness, but to see that, you know what, my business failed. But I learned that, you know, maybe I shouldn't have taken out this loan. <laughs> Whoa, that's a lesson. Now, you know what? I can open up a class that somebody is going to pay me for only if I see it that way. I can see that I, either I'm a failure or I found something. I found a lesson. Now I have that's value. It's all in how you see it. It's all in how you see it. <laughs> Absolutely. You, you put it very nicely, you know, in terms of the light and all. So overall, if we want to say, look at it, how does God want us to look at ourselves and the path that we take. How do you want to put that for us? How does God want us to look at ourselves? Yes. Um, I, be I believe that he wants us to uh, look at ourselves um, as restored, right? Like as we forgive others, he forgives us. Um, and he also wants you to forgive yourself as well. No matter how many mistakes you've made, no matter if uh, you've the one you're the one that have maybe hurt people um, or you have been hurt. He wants you to see yourself as forgiven and he wants you to see yourself as loved no matter what. Because sometimes we're even again, we're stuck in I have to be perfect, whereas he you know, he's perfect. You know, he's he's already paid the price and he's perfect. You know, um, so because he's paid the price and because he's perfect, you really have all the, the the support that you need in order to overcome every challenge that you have. So he wants us um, to already look at yourself as a conqueror. And as a matter of fact, he doesn't. There's a scripture again, AJ, uh, that says, you know, we are more than conquerors. So a conqueror already wins. You know, we're talking about winning the battle of the mind. A conqueror already wins. But he said, you're more than that. So some things um, like these statements, these scriptures that I'm saying is truth. Our, our minds, the way our minds work, it's not necessarily focused on truth. It's focused on the facts and what's happened. But truth will always override fact and facts override feelings. But truth sits on the top. So if I allow myself to have the faith to come into agreement with the truth and how he wants me to look at how he sees me, oh my goodness, you know, you will win each and every time. You you will conquer, and but you will more than conquer, if that makes sense. You're more than a conqueror. You win before you even touch it because you're connected to something, you're connected to him, and he's put it inside of you. If he puts something inside of you, that means... You know, again, he's put it inside of you a long time ago before you came onto earth. That's my belief. Um, and if he if he's put it inside of you, that means he cares about it. Well, why would he just let something fail? You know, but it's more so about you, um, you know, realizing that coming into agreement with that truth. And when you know the truth, the truth will make you free. 
absolutely the truth will make you free you have and you know shared so much of great wisdom with us uh medium and i'm sure a lot of people will benefit out of this but then uh, this is just one podcast show there is so much to learn uh-huh. from you so tell us more about your know define your dna coaching academy and how do people connect with you so that you know they also take coaching from you and understand more about life mind god and finding themselves Oh, define your DNA. And just really, really quick, um, you know, it was one day where I was in prayer and meditation and I just heard that drop into my spirit, define your DNA. And I'm like, what is this thing? You know, God speaks to us and he wants to. Um, but here's it. As I began to explore it um, and even the acronym for it, he, he, he gave it all to me. Just one day, one day in prayer. Um, dive into God is D, neutralize negative beliefs and activate power and purpose, right? Um, It starts with diving into truth, having the faith to dive into truth and who he says you are. Um, I believe we carry the DNA of God. We carry the DNA of of Christ. (laughs) Um, So that is the key to unlocking the mysteries of your purpose, of your power, and even your courage. Um, You know, and and one more thing. Your wounds are somebody else's wings. So they're waiting on you to recognize that you're more than what happened to you. You're the resilience that rises above it. So if you want to connect with me, um, you can go to bonus.defineyourdna.com or you can go to Instagram at defineyourdna. Wonderful, wonderful. I'm sure a lot of people will connect with you and understand more about everything that you talked about. So on this note, it's a wrap on this very special edition of the KJ Masterclass Live. Thank you so much indeed for joining us. Thank you.